all the money earned from this video will be going towards an organization designed to protect children in online spaces. To see what you can do to help and how you can donate, click the link in the description and the iCard and watch this video until the end. The comic dub landscape is really predatory and very dangerous to minors that have access to YouTube. A quick search of the term comic dub in the search bar will reveal just how bad the scene has gotten. But how has it gotten this way? What factors and which creators contribute to the issues that plagues YouTube? And why has YouTube taken zero action in order to prevent this from growing and spreading to what it is now? We got tired of sitting around and asking and decided to research what the hell is going on and give a cry of help out to prevent this issue from occurring any further. From content farms invading the space to a multitude of predatory tactics to gain as many views as possible, we tried to take a deep dive into the exploitive nature of the comic dubbing scene and the many sexual undertones that bombarded the YouTube feed. On November 12th, 2019, YouTube released this video, important update for all creators, complying with COPPA. In response to channels who were directly profiting on having an audience who were under the age of 13, these channels were violating COPPA, or the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, by advertising to kids without parental consent. This helped to combat content farms and channels who were active in that Elsagate scandal that flooded the YouTube database back in 2016. For those unaware, Elsagate refers to a type of content put out by a myriad of channels in the forms of animated and live action content. These videos would include popular children's characters like Spider-Man, Doc McStuffins, and the titular Elsa, engaging in highly violent, sexual, and overall disturbing content. What the f- This led to YouTube developing an AI machine to automatically mark content that was intended for kids. In addition to forcing channels to mark their videos as either for or not for kids for every upload. And while this resulted in some videos, particularly in the animation community, it ultimately did its job of significantly reducing the amount of this content being uploaded to YouTube and purging most of the pre-existing videos. Or so we would think. Ultimately, this phenomenon continues into this community. It is my belief that a lot of old Elsagate channels have migrated into the comic dub scene and are capitalizing off the gray areas that we exist in. Because fan comics and other works are usually created by the older members of fandoms that have more experience and maturity, we get works like our Part Bud series by Leviana that have more mature themings and at times stronger language Shit. than the original work, Miraculous. These type of things usually attract the older teen demographic of any fandom. And although the 13 plus demographic is the majority of people who consume this media, and the minimum age for having an account on YouTube is 13, this doesn't stop a portion of the 12 and under demographic from viewing these types of videos. Whether that be from viewing without being logged in, watching from other accounts, or simply lying about their age on the internet, which is a very common thing. This usually wouldn't be a problem and is in terms with the YouTube terms of service. However, the issue takes form when the majority of comic dub channels use very predatory tactics to market to this demographic of older teens. Tactics that would usually force videos to become age restricted to the 18 plus only accounts of YouTube AI was better at detecting it. One of the most common and disgusting tactics has to do with what's happening with thumbnails that are uploaded with these videos. In this day and age, the one thing that gets views on YouTube is shock value. I mean, look at the biggest creator on YouTube, Mr. Beast. He carefully chooses each and every thumbnail with a specific title to have people clicking on his videos. He's not the only one either. Lots of creators use his style and format because they know people will click on them, including the comic dub community, which coincidentally is the topic of this essay. Now before I show these thumbnails, I will blur out each and every single one and its title so our younger audience doesn't search for them. We wouldn't want to scar them. Let's get into the madness. When you're searching comic dub in the YouTube search bar, you don't even have to scroll down for 5 seconds to see that these pictures are not made for kids. Even in incognito, a mode that specifically doesn't retain your search history, displays this sexually explicit thumbnail dumpster fire. These comics range from Miraculous Ladybug to The Owl House to Gravity Falls and so, so much more. Even shows like The Amazing Digital Circus are already getting sexualized heavily. And even though TADC is more of a mature show, lots of kids and teenagers are going to watch it for its colorful, bright, and fluid animation. So if you think this show is safe from the comic dub scene, think again. Thumbnails are the first thing you see before you decide to click on a video. So putting a not safe for work picture in plain sight is going to draw people's attention to watch your videos. There aren't just a few thumbnails here or there. 
hundreds are being used as clickbait. So much that I'm pretty sure my computer would fry if I took a screenshot of each and every one. The titles being used for these videos are just so heinous, I can't stomach reading them if I wanted to. And the problem isn't just the thumbnails, it's the characters from these shows. Marinette Dupin Chang, 14 years old. Star from Star vs. the Forces of Evil, 15 years old. Dipper and Mabel both turned 13 at the end of season 2, and Nezuko, yes, the darling little half-demon that can pretty much destroy anyone, is no older than 12 years old at the beginning of Demon Slayer. My god, these people are disgusting. Creators of these videos are using NSFW art of an underage fictional character in their thumbnails. Do you want to know what that icing on top of all this messed up cake is? No. Most of these images have nothing to do with the video. Literally, to do research for this video, we had to skim through the videos themselves and there was nothing. I would get it if it was a game theory video that has a wacky thumbnail that makes you go, there's no way this is real, but it ends up being real. But this? This is literal bait porn. Even some of the comments under this video are aware of why the thumbnail is so lewd, but the video is so tame. We can only assume that these creators know that children are going to watch their videos. And if they do, why would you use such art to get clicks from minors? Children see their favorite characters engaging in sexual acts and click on it because it's something you don't see on television. So their curiosity gets the best of them, and the next thing you know, they're getting recommended multiple videos with the same thumbnails. The more recommended videos you have in people's YouTube feeds, the more views you get. Of course, we can't solely blame the creators for this because the ones providing the art for them are the artists themselves, specifically Semi Draws on Twitter. I hope you know that your art can count under child pornography, and that's a felony, my dear. But the fact is, these YouTube channels willingly post these comics of underage characters and voice over them as well. They're no better than the artists that make these, and that's a fact. These heinous thumbnails are clearly violating many of YouTube's policies in regards to thumbnails, including, but not limited to, pornographic imagery, sexual acts or other sexually gratifying imagery, nudity including genitals, vulgar or lewd language, thumbnails that mislead viewers to think they're about to view something that's not in the video. And I mean, this one is clearly just porn of Ladybug and Cat Noir being covered by words and minors can see this. This is available without needing to sign into a YouTube account. That is disgusting. YouTube clearly hasn't enforced these policies. And I believe it's because the AI simply can't tell, because of the more cartoony style that most of these thumbnails have. The only hope is that we all start reporting these thumbnails that we see, and if the thumbnails are this bad, some of these videos are even worse. There's a side of the comic dub scene separate to us that engages in exclusively lewd and NSFW comics. These comics have the same provocative thumbnails as we've discussed before, but with the content to actually match. Aside from the thumbnail, the content would be okay if these videos were actually age restricted. They are not, however, and that makes these channels extremely predatory because they are actively and willingly allowing minors to view this content and access links to external websites like Patreon and Discord for more NSFW content that you can't get past YouTube censors. And it's not like they don't understand what they're doing. YouTube ad stability is categorized into 11 groups, inappropriate language, adult content, violence, shocking content, harmful acts and unreliable claims, recreational drug content, enabling dishonest behavior, firearms related content, sensitive events, and controversial issues. These are available for manual review and afterwards checked by the YouTube AI. While we cannot prove this and therefore this is speculation, we believe that these channels are not checking off the things they are violating in order to earn the most amount of profit off of these videos, while they are also redirecting their audience to external sources of revenue. This means that these channels are directly responsible for whatever minor that will stumble across these videos, and the damage that may occur to them as well. So fuck them. Content farms are the bane of most people's existence on YouTube. And while some aren't as big of a problem on the site, a lot of them are overcrowded and inject low quality garbage onto the platform. That's just the fact. The big problem is that this garbage is directed towards kids. For those unaware, content farming is when a channel mass produces videos without worrying about the quality and focusing on whatever trending topics there are. The content farm, well, farms that we'll be focusing on are the mini channels of skippers. When looking for channels that were exposing children to NSFW content, 
We thought that a lot of them were reusing the same ideas to get the same views as their successors. But then we know it's a very strange pattern. A few of these specific creators have the exact same bios. Oh yeah, baby. Comic dub. Woo. <laughs> I can't. Oh. oh yes, baby. Comic dub. Or some variation of that. At first it seemed like it was just other channels copying each other. Then you take a closer look and it's much more intriguing than it seems. When checking the contact email for all of these channels, they led back to this exact same address, skipcomics at gmail.com. Then, actually going through and watching these videos, we heard the same voices throughout. Looking at all of this evidence, we came to the conclusion that all of these channels were run by one person. And clicking on the link in the Skips Comics YouTube channel reveals the mysterious owner, Alexander Skipov. This profile reveals that Alexander had another channel that YouTube took down, likely because it violated the terms of service, like his other channels currently do. The takedown of this channel seems to only have motivated him to create this league of channels to have a consistent revenue flow, in case any of the others got taken down. Alexander was not alone in this, however. There's one voice consistently heard across these channels. When you check the descriptions of these videos, it includes a link to the voice credits, Algress. Now obviously, we didn't want to assume that this was the main person responsible for all of the mayhem. Convicting a person unknowingly linked in a YouTube video wouldn't be the kindest thing to do. So we did some digging. In the descriptions of these videos is the name of the voice actor themselves. Hi, my name is Aliana and I'm comic stubbing. Knowing the name, we looked for some sort of connection. Considering we thought Aliana and Alexander would have the same surname, we searched up the name Aliana Skipov and... We didn't find her. But what we did find was a Russian website that had online information about people, and it was none other than an Aliana Emelianova who lives in the same city as Alexander. Case closed, we unmasked the villains and the internet was saved. But wait, there's more shit in this rabbit hole that just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. It was in fact the wrong person, because when you click on her VK link and search for Alexander Skipov, nothing comes up. So we were right back to square one, until it just occurred to us that we could search up her name in his friends list. And there we saw Aliana, who didn't have the same name, but she had the same profile picture that was the exact same picture in the linked Instagram on the Misaka channel. And I just want to say, what a bold person you have to be to link yourself to such heinous activities. But there's one more character to introduce into the Skipoverse. Luna Freya VA is a frequent voice that appears in the comics on these channels. These comics often depict characters that are still minors undergoing some experience with sexual undertones. It is wrong to play a part and give voice to these comics that are going out unfiltered on YouTube. It's hard to start off voice acting, and people often take any role that they can get, but these roles are just inexcusable. And there are alternatives you can do, like starting your own channel, which he's done. And there's no content like the ones we've discussed so far on said channel. If you wouldn't produce this type of shit on your own channel, why would it be okay to do for someone else? With the names and faces associated with the Skip Comics brand, we can confidently say that these two adults have been preying and taking advantage of children and dodging YouTube systems for at least six years. This is downright abysmal, and YouTube should be taking serious action. Almost every thumbnail that all of these channels upload violates some policy on YouTube. The Skipoverse is far from the only channels that do this, and we are sure there's more of these comics under the Skip Comics brand that we have yet to find. But there has to be a way to stop these people from continuing producing this content. As the internet grows into more of a necessity rather than a commodity, more and more miners will have access to it. According to the US Department of Commerce Census Bureau American Community Survey in 2021, 97% of people between the ages of 3 and 18 had home internet access. And according to CBS News, 95% of teens 13 through 17 reported using YouTube. This means millions of children worldwide can have these and many more explicit images and themes exposed to them more easily than ever before. Seeing as the human brain doesn't fully develop until at least the age of 25 in most people, these images can lead to a large amount of issues that these minors will have to deal with for the rest of their lives. This can lead to unhealthy views of relationships, consent, and what's considered to be morally acceptable. People are preying on minors' natural curiosity in sexual or explicit materials, 
which could lead to desensitization and unrealistic expectations of themselves and others. If you would like to help protect children from online sexual abuse, you can donate to Child Funds International's Protect Children Online's page, or Defend Nonprofit and 65 Squares donation page. Both will be linked in the description. If you can't afford to donate, that's okay. You can check on the kids in your life to make sure they aren't clicking on anything they aren't supposed to. Or share this video around and try to get YouTube to take better action against these online predators. As we're wrapping this video, we would like to shout out some of the smaller comic dub channels who haven't used predatory tactics to gain views and still have some great voice work in editing, such as Scruffy Berry, Starvier, Lord Calamity, Coffee Dubs, and Comic Dubber 506. We want to thank you for doing this type of work with integrity and hope you get the recognition you deserve. We would also like to give a special fuck you to these channels. Comic Dub, who had the porn thumbnail, Comic Sound, who needs to get age restricted immediately, List Comics, who uses suggestive images unrelated to what they're dubbing, and Alexander Skipoff and Aliana of Skippos for being a content farming groomer. Special pits await for you, and I know we'll be going and mass reporting thumbnails and videos once this video is released. There are countless other channels like these, but these are the ones that engage with our audience, which consists of at least 16.5% of viewers, 13 to 17. I hope YouTube does something about these channels and tactics and that this video reaches the right people. For anyone who thinks they can get paid to lure and prey on minors on the internet, I hope you know your days are numbered. And that's just a theory. A web theory. You're playing Minecraft in a cave looking for diamonds. That's funny. I'm in the same cave looking for miners. Cause my sexual attraction to miners is major. Can't even play